Okay, so this is part three of our Build the Solar System project in Animator. And uh, we'll start right away by kind of zeroing in on uh, Saturn. And I'm going to hit the Shift F so I can zoom right in on it. And then hit F to kind of back off on it, just to double check it. Here's where it's going to get started. We're going to first make sure that we have snapped on, snap to grid. We want to have the grid snap turned on to make life a little simpler for ourselves. And then we're going to double click the planet Saturn and I'd like to set it at a very even X location. So I'm going to adjust this, round it off to 300. And I know that might cause some collisions. Um, you might have to do some other adjustments to the planets, but it's worth doing. Okay. So Saturn lives at 300, 0, 0 right now. Perfect. Uh, next step, I'm viewing from the front. And what we're going to have to do is try to create some sort of a ruler to measure Saturn's rings. We have no object that's going to give us the shape that we want right away without having some sort of a ruler behind it. So I'm going to use the cube tool and I'm going to draw a ruler sort of underneath. And when I say ruler, it's just going to be a shape, roughly about that size. I'm going to guess at how big Saturn's rings are right now. And then I'm going to double click it and put in the precise location to match Saturn, 300. Don't worry about the Y, it's naturally below it, so I don't want to change that. But the X and the Z locations, well, they're going to be more specific. And if you do a little uh, Wikipedia search, you'll find that the diameter of the outer rings of Saturn are 280.6 thousand kilometers. So I'm going to put that size as the X location that's going across. I'm going to set its Y location to 20, just to make it nice and consistent. And I'm going to match the Z to 280.6 because the Z is the depth and we want this thing to be a square when viewed from above. I say OK and that's done. And just to distinguish this I'm going to give it some color. I'll pick some random color from one of the planets and just apply it. So there's my my ruler for the width of the outer rings. It's that big and yeah it's going to hit Jupiter. That's OK. We'll fix Jupiter later. Next I'm going to draw another cube roughly at the same central location. This is going to be uh, a ruler that marks the outer, or sorry, the inner rings and the inside of the rings. If I double click it, I'm going to apply the same thing. Wow, 300, perfect. Uh, the value that I'm putting for X and Z are going to be 134.6. That's 134,600 kilometers. I'll put 20 there as well. And I'm going to put the same value here, 134.6. Done. And I don't have to color it. I just wanted to have some way of being able to distinguish between this ruler and this one. And now if we view this thing from the top, I'll tap the 8 key, hit F, and we can see that is going to give us the diameter of the outer and inner rings. So now it's a matter of building those rings. And here's the way I found that it seems to be the easiest to do it. There may be better ways, but uh, this seems to work for me. First of all, I'm going to use an N-GON. And before I start drawing it, I have to go to the build and define the N-GON under primitives right down at the bottom, that lets me choose how many sides I want this n-gon to have. The more, the better. And I'm going to go to 32, because it seems to be a, a decent number. Choose the n-gon, and now if I have snap to grid on and I hover right close to the center, when I start drawing it should snap to that center and let me pull a ring all the way out here that should match the outside edges. So as carefully as I can, I'm going to try to get that to the outside edges of the bottom ruler. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing again. Poly uh, sorry, N-Gon, start at the center, drag out to the inner ruler. Now that I have the outer N-Gon and the inner N-Gon uh, drawn roughly to scale, I'm going to select the bottom cube and just delete it, and the inner cube and delete it, and what we're left with are two paths that are called splines. And if I right mouse click one and then the other, I can select both those splines at the same time. And the next thing to do is to go to build and join the splines together so they act as one object. Now to, to fill in the splines we're going to use a build device called extrude. And if I extrude with those two things selected and if I choose the right parameters I should get a, like a cookie cutter I'll get the shape that I want. The extrude settings that I'm going to use for this I'm going to set it to extrude along the y-axis which means I'm sort of pulling the cookie cutter up and down towards me. The length I'm going to set to 2 because I don't need this thing to be very thick. The rings aren't very thick. In real life, they're about a kilometer thick. And segments, we want to set that to 1. We do want to cap the start and the end and leave texture coordinates turned on and don't tessellate caps left off. And when we say OK, we should get the ring shape, just like that. 
and you can go and take a look at this shape now, just sort of arc rotate and spin it around and see the things are working pretty well for it. I'm going to view it back from the top again. Because the next thing that we want to do is we want to apply a texture to it to make it look a lot more like the actual ring. So I'm going to go down to a new setting here. By the way, you can move this materials up and down just by grabbing it and sliding it. I'll double click new. I'm going to create a new material called rings. And I'm going to click on textures right away. Ambient. Load texture. And I've already prepared a ring texture that I found. That looks like this. It has to be a JPEG. I'll open that up and I will select it and say OK. And I'll do the same thing for the diffuse. Saturn rings. OK. Say OK. And this is the transparency. And I'm going to set the transparency to 0 0.7 so that you can actually see through these rings. Because that's sort of what happens with the real rings. Say OK. I've got it selected. Choose the ring material. Hit apply. And you'll see it looks weird. So now we got to get into something that's a little bit fancier. And this takes a little bit of skill. A couple of tries at it and you'll get it though. We're going to use something called the UV tool. And we're going to enable generation of a texture. Say yes. So it's going to modify this texture for us. Left wheel mouse button straight up and down. Don't roll to the side. If you do, try to roll it back so the grids, grid lines match again. It's going to be pretty close to getting that last little white line in there. I think I'll leave it just about there. So now we've stretched it vertically. To do horizontally, you use the wheel mouse button in the middle, and I'm just going to slide side to side. Try to go directly side to side. No up or down. And if you go up or down, you've got problems. So there's side to side. And it looks like I've got it pretty close to what I want. And finally, using the right wheel mouse, or sorry, the right mouse button, we can change the offset of it to try to get this to match the outside edge as perfectly as we can make it. So looks like I got something pretty good there. And to get out of UV mode, we don't want to touch anything else in it. I'm just going to choose the Select tool, Arc Rotate, and take a look and see what we made. And you can see the transparencies working on it. And we've got ourselves our rings. The last thing we want to do with this, I think, is we want to go back into Select mode, choose both the planet and the rings with the right mouse button. Select them both. We're going to build and group this together. So now from the top we could, if we wanted to, hit the move button and move this thing around a little bit. Tap the A button, grab Jupiter, move Jupiter off to the side. Hit the F button, see how all this is shaping up. We've got ourselves a solar system.